Welcome back to Echo Ridge. Today, we're going to see if I can save this disaster of a colony. Fellow Twitch streamer and friend of mine, who knows yo, sent this to me to give it a look, in which I did live over on Twitch, and it didn't take too long for all the dupes to begin to die. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to see if I can turn this colony around. First, a general overview where we have to look at what we're up against. And as the standard, oxygen is not included. Another problem I see right from the rip is it's cycle 122 and they are still on mealwood and quite a bit of it as well, which has me wanting to look and see how much dirt there is available. Looks like I'm going to have to hit play just to have all the resources update. 36 tons? 36 tons isn't too bad and I'm sure there's plenty more dirt on the planetoid. Taking a quick look at how many millwoods there are, it looks like there's four rows of 24, which would be 96, except this fourth row has doors and lamps for some odd reason. So we can subtract four, so we have 92 total mealwood. With each duplicate requiring five mealwood, that's only enough food for 18 and a half duplicates. So we're also a little short on food here. Also looking at the fact that each meal wood requires 10 kilos of dirt per cycle. That's 920 kilos, which is almost a ton of dirt every single cycle. In fact, rough math has it that we only have about 40 cycles remaining to be able to live off of this meal wood. All right, so far, auction is grim. Food's getting ready to be on the way out. What other great surprises can we find here? If we look to the north of the colony, you can see they have a cool steam vent sitting in the open air with a rather ingenious canal sort of system that takes all of the steam as it condenses into water and then it travels this canal over into this tundra biome where they're then pumping the water out. Now, while I think the idea is ingenious, there's many problems with this. First, having this cool steam vent uncorked like this is gonna put a lot of heat into the surrounding area. And while you're temporarily fending it off with some insulated tiles, eventually the area is gonna get hot enough to where you're not gonna be condensing quite as fast and just have a bunch of steam sitting around everywhere. Granted, it would take a while because of all the surrounding area, which is helping condense that steam. There's just better ways to do it. Now, my friend who knows yo is not a very experienced auction not included player. Some of this playthrough was a little tongue in cheek though, but I think there's a pretty good learning opportunity here, especially for the newer player. For instance, we're 122 cycles in, and other than this one shaft here, we haven't done much exploration in and around the colony. Second, there are 21 duplicates in the colony, and the only reliable water source that's been found is the cool steam vent. Not to mention, we're not doing good on food, so I think this is a classic case of hiring too many duplicates before your colony was ready for them. After taking a deeper look, another issue I see is duplicate labor. Yeah, there's 21 dupes, but there are storage bins all over this colony, which means the duplicates are having to run around going to pick up materials and drop them off. Who knows, Joe's even gone to the point of having a bunch of storage bins filled with ice and waiting for the ice to melt into their water tank. While the system appears to be ingenious, there are much quicker ways to melt ice. Furthermore, we really don't need a lot of water right now. We've got a pretty good tank, so why waste the duplicate labor on going to grab all the ice in the first place? On the exploration front, there is a future echo problem over here in the form of a chlorine gas geyser. There's a minor volcano over here a gold volcano south of it, and we do have the oil biome down here. The hermit was located, and we're definitely not going to be spending duplicate labor on going to say hi, but right above the hermit is another vent or geyser. So I think this is going to be a priority because that could be a reliable water source. But so far, that's all I've really found. So all that water was coming down here to be chilled, which it's doing a decent job. The water down here is around 10 degrees, and then it's pumped all the way oh dear goodness avert your eyes avert your eyes i'm not even gonna look at that anymore into this set of four water sieves let me see if i can zoom in and i have no idea why i'm not sure what's more painful this or this 
All right, let's get this show on the road and see what we can do. Step one has to be oxygen. We have 48,000 calories, which will get us by for a couple of cycles. I cannot believe there's 21 duplicates on this colony. With oxygen being the priority, I did find this rather tasty amount of polluted oxygen in here. And another one down here that has 23.5 kilos. That could be handy. So I think step one is going to be opening this up just to allow the polluted oxygen out. We don't have to worry about ruining this room because there aren't too many rooms around here, which brings me to the next issue, which is stress. The reason why some of the duplicates are stressed is because of low morale, with several of the duplicates having a higher morale need than what the morale they're being given. And part of that reason is because, well, they're not living in any barracks, nor do they have a great hall. There are a couple of mess halls, but we'll look to expand these as well. I think step one after that digging to release the oxygen is going to be getting rid of all of these storage bins. Also, another tip, if you did want to drop off the ice, you could just use an automatic dispenser and have it drop into the water. Additionally, we also have access to temperature shift plates. We could just build a bunch of ice temperature shift plates and all of those will melt and make more water. Now, there is some polluted water in here which I think the best way to be able to get rid of it might be to block it off. But it's not a big deal because, yeah, this is some pretty germy water. There are food poisoning germs all over the place, and you can see why. The bathroom system is bringing the fresh water in and taking all the dirty water, cleaning it, and then putting it back into the main water source of the colony. Here's some more storage bins that have to go. There is a bunch of polluted water bottles down here providing some oxygen, except there's a mechanized airlock that is preventing the oxygen from flowing over to this side. And I have no idea what's going on with this power grid. We're using heavy watt wire down to the individual buildings. It looks like they had the right idea with the power spine here. They even have a power transformer, but then they don't use the power transformer, although their use of wire bridges is definitely top tier. I think we're also gonna open this area up. I have no idea why there's a sink here. Let's get rid of this door. And yes, pretty much this entire major power spine because this is causing a lot of negative decor, which is ultimately also hurting morale. <laughs> Look at this giant heavy watt wire run, all to go to one transformer. In this case, the two strand wire is only 25 kilos. The heavy watt wire is 100 kilos. So you're better off putting the power transformer way up here and then running the two strand wire down. Let's set up a couple of these, shall we? We'll put one here and one here. Oh no, they've been using iron ore this whole time. Let's switch back to copper, shall we? Not to mention, I don't think we have a reason to even power this. After all, we haven't even discovered the second planetoid yet. Another issue I just discovered is all of this meal ice is just being eaten raw. It would be nice to start using the electric grill, at least until we find another source of food. And that way we can cook the meal ice into pickled meal. At a minimum, it will cook off all the food poisoning germs sitting on the meal ice. And additionally, it'll help keep the meal ice from going stale quite as quickly. We have opened up this cavity and so oxygen is starting to flow over here. I need to open it up a little bit more. Luckily, all the floors are built out of airflow tiles, which we need to recapture because that's a bunch of valuable copper ore. I will keep the airflow tiles here on the side though. It'll help the polluted oxygen come from that cavern over into the main part of the colony. They were running oxygen diffusers. I don't think there is any algae left. No, there is no algae. We might be able to find some, for instance, right here next to the colony. There's a bunch of it over here. This cool steam vent is dormant, so we do have some time. So let's pick this up here and go capture all of this delicious algae. Look at all this up here. This will at least give us some time until we're able to build that spawn that this colony so desperately needs. Oh, we have dust caps. Although we only have about a ton and a half worth of slime. If we can capture some of this carbon dioxide, 
a mushroom farm would be pretty good. In fact, this sink right here looks perfect and it's 23 degrees. Let's also get rid of this bottle emptier and start mopping all this up. Remember, your duplicates who walk through water get sopping wet, which also increases their stress. Another small issue is there is some smart batteries with a whole bunch of jumbo batteries. We do have access to automation wire, so we're gonna hook this grid up. And the way we're going to do it is basically by starting over. Yep, we're, we're just gonna get rid of all of it. Which begs the question, how much coal is there? 20 tons of coal because we're not running any hatches. I'm assuming the hatch that came with the planetoid was eaten a long time ago. I'm also gonna start digging down here to collect all this polluted water. I mean, we have enough duplicates. We shouldn't have to worry about duplicate labor. And we'll dig this whole thing out, which another reason why is because I want all this polluted oxygen. And once the water is dropped, I can open up this entire side because while we are breathing right now a little bit better, it's still not looking very good. We also have access to auto super. So in our new little power structure here, we are going to be able to automate the delivery of the coal. And then we're gonna put in one smart battery and then we'll hook up this entire grid like that. We'll load this storage bin up with as much coal as we can find. Hopefully we'll be able to find another hatch around here and start ranching them. I'm also starting work on the mushroom farm, but I need to get rid of all these bottles of polluted water that were being stored down here. So I think the best place for them now is going to be up here. I also need to figure out this situation. So I think temporarily I am gonna disconnect this whole thing because rather than untangling this mess, I think it might just be smarter to start over. There's a hatch right there. Do we have any ranchers? We do have a critter rancher, although we are missing a mechatronics engineer. It looks like Ren and Queen Guerrero already have electrical engineering. Oh, the queen will be perfect for a mechatronics engineer. We'll also check out Ren, who I'd like to make a mechatronics engineer, but after they've been given so much doctoring, I don't dare do it until we can skill scrub them. Some other skills we can update on. We got some better farmers and ranchers here. Liam looks like they're good at construction. Max wants to be a pilot. Unfortunately, doesn't look like we're going to be making it to rockets anytime soon. So sorry, buddy. You're picking things up and setting them down. Same goes with this meep. After looking at the skill points, I dared to look at the priority screen and no priorities were set, which is not necessarily a bad thing, especially considering we have so much to do around this colony. Everybody is sort of pitching in and doing everything. And oh my goodness, I just realized something else. I was looking around trying to find out where the duplicates were when I found the entire colony sleeping. That's right. They're all on the same shift. This is bad. Because that means we're going to have 21 duplicates all trying to use the bathroom first thing in the morning. It also means that during the nighttime, we have no duplicates working. And here they go. Dibs on the showers and the toilets. There are four toilets, so we can have four duplicates per shift. So at a minimum, we're gonna need six shifts. There's five and six. Give me a minute. I am going with the three downtime shifts as well because they could use the extra morale until we're able to get those great halls and everything in. There we go. That's much better. And now there won't be such a line to use the bathroom. And the first pot I've seen on this disaster colony has some curative tablets, which are probably gonna come in handy because the dupes here are always sick. I wanted to highlight another problem with using airflow tiles as your floors. I have no idea how long water's been sitting on those airflow tiles, but that means the duplicates are pretty much staying stressed out. We're having a bit of a toilet issue. In the process of rebuilding this entire plumbing system, we've ran out of water for the toilets, which means quite a few duplicates are peeing on themselves. It's not too big of a deal and we're getting it fixed, but not before they end up fixing all these pipes because this is unacceptable. I don't care who you are. In fact, I think this whole system would be easier if we just deconstruct every single pipe on the entire colony. Now we are gonna need to clean all of this water. So we're gonna set up a system back here as the standard. I'll make sure there are doors here. Oh my goodness, look at all this algae in here. We also have a pip. Do we have any acorns? If I could find an arbor tree, we could start working those pips as well. 
Okay, the bathroom situation is getting a little bit better. We now have our closed loop. The only thing I need to do is worry about our overflow. But I have seen some thimble reeds around here, so we'll throw a couple of those in here. There will be some polluted dirt coming out of the water sieve, so I'll put one quick deodorizer here. In fact, I can remove this door and put a couple of solid tiles so the polluted oxygen won't be able to get from this side over. The power situation looks, I don't know, a little bit better. We have plenty of coal, and considering we're actually not using a lot of power on the colony, these three coal generators should have no problem keeping up with this for the foreseeable future. We'll set these on 9060. We do have some oxygen diffusers running. We have this electric grill, which we need to get that set up. We'll do some pickled meal forever. We'll also put one nice refrigerator right there. And I just realized there was actually some bristle blossoms in here. That's why there was lamps. You just couldn't see it through all the clutter. Well, we're not doing bristle blossoms right now. Oxygen's doing better. It's not where we need to get it yet. Right now, I am moving all the cots into their own barracks, and that way we can reduce some of this stress by giving them a little bit better morale. And then I'm gonna get a couple of great halls set up, and then I think we'll finally be able to go exploring a little bit. Calories are doing a little rough. We got down pretty low. Fortunately, there is still a bunch of muckroot sitting around here as well. Now this isn't going to be a long-term problem because we have started growing the dust caps. We've also been ripping through this biome down here because I think this is where our first spawn is going to end up going. And considering how far down this place goes, it's probably where I'd also end up putting our metal refinery. And here's another beautiful geyser. As soon as we drop this water, we'll be able to take a look at it. I mean, look at the size of this biome and it may still keep going down through here. So we're gonna have plenty of slime to put our duplicates on fried mushrooms for quite a bit. Another source of food is all of these wonderful naturally growing sleet weeds. I just need to provide an entrance for the duplicates and they'll be able to get there and we'd be able to sustain off of sleet wheat for a little while as well. So now we have pickled meal, frost buns, we're gonna have some fried mushrooms, and even the occasional piece of barbecue when some of these animals convert to meat. Speaking of which, we found a couple more hatches, so it is time to start doing that as well. The only question remains of where I'm going to put them. We do now have a great hall and three barracks, which is responsible for improving the morale of the entire colony. We are no longer having any morale issues, which means I can get rid of these massage tables for sure. And this whole time, right next to the colony, was a wonderful saltwater geyser. Granted, it's coming out at 95C, but it's sitting right next to a tundra biome. We're also digging now to find out what this geyser is and this one. There is a natural gas geyser here, so that could be a great solution for some mid-game power. There's Dracos up here, so you know we could tap into them for plastic reed fiber and barbecue. Oh my goodness. And there's even more of a slime biome over here with more beautiful algae. Just from the digging I've done, over here, we've managed to unearth 6.5 tons of it. Hence the reason the oxygen situation is doing much better. And I found a perfect spot for a pair of hatch ranches. We're going to use the often overlooked vertical ranch style. And those look just like this. Perfect 96 tiles and everything the hatches will need. More importantly, hold on. Why are you in pajamas? Minus eight to athletics being caused by the pajamas. Let's go ahead and unequip those pajamas. We have absolutely no reason to be running the Somnium Synthesizer right now. The last two geysers we found, this one is a major volcano, and then this one is a gold volcano, which gives us the infinite supply of igneous rock and the infinite supply of refined metal. So we found the saltwater geyser here, which when we throw it through some electrolyzers would provide us all the oxygen we need. And we have plenty of time to get there now, with over five tons of algae and more being dug up every single cycle. We also have slimy meteors, so even when we do finally get through the 23 tons worth of slime, we'd be able to support this mushroom farm indefinitely. We're now up over 50,000 calories. The duplicates are doing much better in terms of oxygen, so I think this colony has been sufficiently saved. If this were my own colony and I wanted to prioritize some stuff, I'd get the spawn going, I'd keep digging down through here, and drop a nice metal refinery. All this polluted water would serve a metal refinery with coolant for quite some time. I might even grab the pip 
and do some more naturally planted sleet weeds. In the end, though, I decided to keep the canal because I kind of like it, even if it's not very functional. And at a minimum, at least the plumbing looks a lot better. I hope you enjoyed this disaster colony save. I always enjoy looking at other people's colonies because that's where we get to discover new and interesting ideas such as this canal and the odd use of the double ladder rung. <laughs> Many thanks to my friend who knows yo for letting us take a look at his colony. You'll often see me hanging out in his channel. So if you're looking for another streamer to watch, I highly recommend who knows yo. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below and I hope to see you there. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about the video and this colony save. So until next time, much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.